Okay, so um, yeah, heavy topic: financial education and, and poverty. So um, we'll uh, we'll see uh, um, what is financial education, what is uh, poverty, and and whether both can uh, can go together. So uh, let's uh, uh, let's start. Um, just to give you a bit of context, typically, and I, I've been invited to uh, to design many training or, or run programs with this kind of uh, uh, of situation. Um, people are very poor. At some point, they get into debt, and um, the analysis which is uh, made is that the uh, it's because they lack um, skills in money management. They they get into debt or they can't manage their uh, their money. So with some financial literacy, hopefully this could help them uh, get out of poverty and uh, and uh, improve their situation. So the the question is, is that true? It's uh, uh, so I'm I'm building that from all the years of experience I, I have in in running that kind of uh, of programs or talking to uh, NGOs about these uh, these kind of programs. I think before we go um, further, it's uh, very important to uh, uh, to define what is uh, poverty, and the uh, uh, it's the number one goal in the uh, sustainable development uh, goals defined by the uh, uh, the United Nations. It's to end poverty in all its forms everywhere, and the. Um, it's it's first extreme poverty is first defined um, in monetary terms, and the uh, the definition the official definition is that it's people who survive on less than two dollars fifteen cents uh, U.S. dollars uh, per per day, and the um, it's roughly uh, um, accounts for nearly 700 million uh, people in uh, in 2022 it um it declined for for a, a good decade but uh then the uh with the pandemic the the number went up actually so uh, and so that's the un definition but every country more or less has um its own definition of where the the poverty line is and uh for some of them um i'm thinking of the us for example the um it's not necessarily um a fixed amount but it's a percentage relative to the uh, kind of average income uh, that um uh, people earn in the uh, in the country thing is Poverty is not just monetary, and we need to keep that in mind because we're talking about financial education. So, uh, but poverty is not just about money. Um, I think most I've, I've just given you on this screen the three um, definitions, three three measurements of poverty, which include um, other things than money, and. Uh, and it's one from the from the World Bank, uh, the Oxford University in the UK has been yeah, very uh, uh, at the forefront of the um, of studies about the the different uh, dimensions of uh, of poverty, and there's a third one uh, which has been as a study uh, done by um, a French charity charity called ATD Carmont, but it's, they uh, they run that study in different countries. So. All of them, um, all these um, index of poverty, trying to kind of explain better what poverty is. It's not just the lack of money, uh, even though the World Bank um, uh, still includes this uh, two point five dollars threshold uh, in its uh, measurement. It's also the lack of um, education. Where um, uh, people don't manage to um, uh, to achieve uh, uh, education or uh, whether they they can't they they just don't enroll, and the lack of a basic infrastructure, whether it's yeah, access to water, sanitation, electricity, and we find that also in the uh, uh, Oxford University um, Global Multidimensional Poverty Index, but uh, all the living standards they look at things like um, what kind of um, fuel do you use to to cook, and whether there's yeah, access to the main grid in terms of electricity, something for the for the water. And um, the the health things like nutrition and, and child mortality. So in, in the in the survey, uh, there's things on the um, uh, on the um, on the size, the weight of uh, of children and, and and adults. 
And um, more recently, there's been a, a very interesting study done uh, on the kind of hidden or missing dimensions of poverty uh, in terms of um, the type of work that um, poor people have access to, uh, whether it um, uh, provides a decent salary, um, the, the empowerment. And it's something in the interviews that I've done um, in, uh, in some programs for, um, to kind of assess the needs, um, uh, what kind of programs we, we could run. It's something that I've heard very often, actually. It's the, the feeling of being disempowered. I have no choice. I mean, the numbers of times I've, I've heard that from, uh, from very poor people uh, um, trying to, to justify why they do something, say, I have no choice. And, and um, uh, social connectedness is also something very, very important. When, um, um, and I felt that more in interviews I've done in, the, um, uh, in more developed countries, actually, very poor people say, well, we don't have any social life because uh, everything costs money, actually. So... Um, and obviously the, the psychological uh, well-being and, and so on. But again, the hidden dimensions of, uh, of poverty, there's, there's also um, the, um, the, the, the struggle, the, the feeling that every day you just wake up and it's a struggle. So, uh, so if um, uh, when you have these, um, uh, these indexes, um, there was no numbers in, in, in people, uh, in terms of people in the, um, in the third um, index, but the, the two other index, the one from the World Bank and the um, uh, OPHI, they, it roughly um, puts the number of very poor people to 1.1 billion. And some people that say, what's the World Bank and notice that people earn or, or have more than $2.5 um, a day, but uh, they're still poor in terms of yeah, education and access to basic uh, infrastructure. So I'll send you the, um, uh, the PowerPoint if you want, and you have all the, uh, uh, these uh, studies in the, uh, in the links that are on this uh, slide. So what causes poverty? Yeah, and I see, yeah, a melody. Yeah, a melody, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, just thank you for if you can share the PowerPoint. Okay, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The um, so the causes of poverty. Uh, I think that's important to um. So we, we have a, a multi-dimensional uh, phases of poverty, and obviously uh, the causes are, are multiple. Also, I think I, I put the, the conflict in number one. It's um. Uh, I mean, displaced people, people who lose everything from from wars and, and conflicts. Uh, obviously, uh, it's um, a major cause of uh, of poverty. Uh, hunger, and it's not the only one, but hunger and malnutrition. Is um, is both a cause and a consequence. Actually, if you um, if you don't have enough uh, uh, money and, and and you don't grow your own food and so on, obviously uh, you uh, um, you you lack uh, energy to. Um, uh, to, to work and to uh, uh, to even think. I mean, there's numerous studies about um, uh, people who have um, take poor decisions uh, because um, they just um, they're just hungry. So uh, uh, so that's um, that's impact the uh, uh, the poverty. But the lack of money and the the, the poverty itself is also. Uh, um, a, a cause of uh, of hunger, so it kind of uh, uh, goes in circle. Unfortunately, um, access to healthcare and um, everything about yeah marginalization, power abuse. I mean, you have yeah more poverty in some uh, in some communities which are marginalized, and uh, access to yeah sanitation. I think this is really captured in the uh, in the different um, indexes of uh, of poverty. Climate change has become uh, because of the the impact on the agriculture, impacts on um, access to water, displacement, and so on, is, has become uh, um, a, a big uh, cause of poverty. Education, decent jobs, we, we talked about it. Public infrastructure, uh, public welfare, uh, so on, and that's been very, very obvious during the, the pandemic. I mean, countries where there was public welfare, the um, the state, the government uh, managed to to give some financial support to uh, uh, or food distribution to uh, um, uh, to people. 
uh, fared better than um, countries where there's absolutely no uh, public welfare. And the absence of um, uh, of safety net. So um, to me, very often, I, I think that the, the big difference between poor people and, 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 and richer people is that if there's something, if they manage their, their money badly or they take them, uh, they have a hardship or, or, or they take like a, a, a wrong decision. Uh, the main difference is that um, very uh, poor people don't have any uh, safety net. So the, the, uh, the decision is going to impact them fully and change their life. Whether um, if you take like a wrong decision and you have um, a, a salary, okay, maybe you, you lost money, but it's um, it doesn't threaten your uh, uh, your home, it doesn't uh, threaten your your health. So, um, and intergenerational poverty is also um, a, a very um, uh, a cause of uh, of poverty uh, as well. So. That's a long list, but it's important to keep all these causes in, in mind to see how financial education can uh, play um, uh, a role. So um, I've written the um, uh, the definition, the kind of official definition of, of financial literacy from the uh, uh, OECD, and the. Um, uh, I think there are those who are present at the uh, at our uh, second webinar. Uh, we've been through it, so I'm not going to uh, go through it um, again. What I wanted to give you is is a bit of historics about the uh, uh, historical background about financial education. The um, for, in the 19th century, actually, there was some kind of uh, financial education, mostly taught in uh, in women's uh, uh, schools, um, and it was called the the home economics. So I was teaching, uh, so mainly yeah, girls how to how to cook, how to budget, and uh, uh, how to sew and, and that kind of thing. So budgeting, home but um, family budgeting was included in the um, uh, in these schools uh, programs in um, in the U.S. but also in uh, in Europe. Then the the big start of financial education, as we know it, started in the uh, uh, late 1990s and, and 2000, when the um, the governments realized that um, the population uh, was aging, uh, and it's definitely a, a movement from the uh, um, from the developed uh, countries. Their population was aging, and all the um, public um, um, funded retirement systems uh, uh, were uh, were in danger. They said uh, to um, because of this aging of population. So they really wanted um, the um, uh, people to save for retirement. So that was the uh, uh, a big um, priority, and to start saving more. Also, because all the retirement system uh, is starting to be shifted to financial markets. So, and um, there was also the, from the more, um, the, the developing countries, there was a, a big push on financial education with the uh, development of microcredit. And I, I saw that um, uh, firsthand in, a, in, a, in when AMB Max Free started actually in, in 2005, the, uh, uh, there was a big conference on financial education in, in Hong Kong. And the most of the, uh, like, uh, at least half of the, of the participants were people from microcredit. And their main concern was that we need some education so that people can repay their, uh, their uh, micro loans. Comes 2008 and the subprime crisis, uh, and then the um, the analysis. One of the analysis, which was uh, uh, done at the time of the uh, of the crisis, was that borrowers were not responsible, and um, so they they should be educated to um, uh, not take an, uh, a debt if they don't understand that. And there was no. We can yeah, talk about that later. Actually, there was no education on the on the lenders, who put yeah heavy burden and unsustainable burden to uh, uh, to borrowers. But um, at the time, that was the analysis which was done. It's really at that time that the uh, OECD uh, started putting pushing governments to to put financial education as their national uh, priority. So you can see that. Financial education 
has really been um, the focus of it is really about debt, banking, and uh, retirement savings. It's not about poverty. So financial education has never been um, uh, the goal of financial education has never been to uh, reduce poverty. Uh, so if we go back to all the causes that we uh, uh, we saw um, previously, what could financial education as it is now could could help? Um, it could help with some uh, with some hunger or, or malnutrition uh, issues if you run a program on on food budgeting for example to encourage uh, poor people to prioritize their expenses towards nutritious food uh, so that that could be uh, one thing that um, could uh, work. financial education could help the um, access to sanitation um, I think that was, um, that was um, many years ago, I, I ran a program, I helped um, an NGO in, um, in Cambodia run that kind of program when you, you, you um, the idea was to really encourage people to save a bit so that they could um, finance some, uh, some home improvement and more or less, I was just to install toilets in their, uh, in their house. Uh, so that could be uh, one, uh, one thing where financial education can help. Lack of education, um, typically when the um, people have to pay for school fees. Uh, so unfortunately, some countries uh, have uh, free schools, but others don't. So, uh, and even when school is uh, is free, you, you still have some uh, uh, stationery to buy. Some schools have uniforms and, and so on. So the uh, that could be one thing that uh, a program of financial education could help with. Um, uh, making sure that parents manage to save for uh, for school fees, and in terms of having no safety net at all, um, um, how to save and how to keep uh, these saving safe uh, uh, and not um, as I I saw actually uh, uh, once in a, uh, I think it was in, in Burkina uh, like money in a in a bag buried in the uh, in the earth. I mean that, that where that's where financial education could uh, could help. So you see all the other points. I really doubt that financial education can uh, can help, and the the reason is is um, it financial education as it is does not address at all systematic causes of uh, of poverty, and poverty has many systematic uh, causes. It's not poverty is not caused uh, by uh, the the lack of uh, uh, management money management skills of uh, of people. And actually, there's been yeah, numerous studies um, about the ability of poor people to uh, to manage their uh, their money. Um, they and um, uh, so th there's one one good uh, good book. Can yeah, it's it's about the the, the U.S. It's um, two dollars a day, uh, and it's it's written by um, uh, by two professors actually of uh, uh, um, that studied for. for several years, people who, who live on $2 uh, a day in, uh, in the US. Uh, and, but there, there are other studies um, on, the, on the topic. And, and I've seen it um, also firsthand when I, uh, when I interview people, um, uh, when I do a um, needs assessment. The very poor people know the prices of everything, for instance, and uh, they know where they can buy things. They know where things are cheaper, and uh, and and they do uh, priorities uh, in the head extremely well. Uh, and I think they they manage in their circumstances. They manage money money much better than we, when we would. And um, and there are other studies too that that prove that. Um, uh, very poor people or poor people are generally more generous than uh, than rich people. So uh, so they managed to save a bit. I think all the, the savings group movements have, have built on on that. Uh, they uh, there's this um, uh, this recognition that very poor people manage their money. And I think part of this recognition comes from the uh, finally the the trend that instead of just um, uh, giving in kinds NGOs of starting doing cash transfers because um, uh, there was for a long time this uh, misconception that poor people would not spend their money well if uh, if um, uh, you give them cash. But um, finally, uh, there's been a, a, a 
it's growing movement of NGOs giving cash transfers because they uh, uh, they recognize that um, each each poor person know where uh, they are, uh, their priorities are. So uh, one can be, uh, one family may want, uh, especially to repair the roofs, for example, or one family may want to um, um, buy more nutritious food or whatever, but they know themselves their priorities. As uh, so funny, we, we, we take poor people as adults who can take their own decisions. So uh, it is about time. So, uh, uh, so that's, obviously limits the impact of financial education on, on very poor because it doesn't address the right causes, the systematic causes. And um, you kind of teach something or, or organize a, a training workshop on, on things that uh, many poor people already know. So uh, and that's, um, that's a big issue. So that sounds like a very negative uh, note, but there, there are other things that financial education can, uh, can do. The first thing is um, instead of targeting the very poor, it should target the ones above. And um, I've seen it uh, twice. Uh, I think there was a study done in uh, uh, in Cambodia again. So I, I often quote Cambodia because I, 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 I worked several times, uh, or numerous times uh, there. Um, I think it was it was done in the in the Siem Reap area. And um, it was an NGO who, um, I think it was the GIZ, who um, wanted to do an impact assessment after years of investing and, and, and running several programs that they, they wanted to see the, the impact. So what they, what they saw is that some certain numbers of people had a bigger income. Um, thanks probably to their uh, programs, thanks also probably to the um, kind of yeah, general development of, uh, uh, of Cambodia, of the, of the economy. But they were not in a better financial position, actually, in a better financial situation. And one reason uh, was they had more debts. And the uh, so they, they, they tried to understand why, um, why their financial situation itself hadn't really improved. And um, there were several reasons. One reason was that because they felt that they had a big, bigger income, they were um, they were more tempted to um, to spend and to borrow, and they were approached more uh, by uh, lenders to uh, to borrow money. So there was this pressure, uh, which um, didn't exist when they were very very poor. Um, another reason too is that um, family relatives would um, come to them and ask them for for more money because they they could see that they they had a um, a better situation and uh, and they were also more tempted to um, finally buy assets like a motorbike and so on they uh, they didn't before so they um, they were more in debt than um, when they were very poor when they had hardly any any debt so uh, there was some uh, a paradox uh, but that, that could be explained by all this pressure to either spend or, or, or borrow and um, a similar example was shared by me by um, NGO working in uh, uh, in Shenzhen actually in China so there are um, um, millions of people who uh, uh, are um, Chinese migrants, so usually from the um, Yunnan or, or Sichuan provinces who come to work in the uh, uh, in the Guangzhou area. And the usually when they are in the villages, they are very poor, but they have no debt. And when they move to the uh, to the city, and they have um, uh, a bigger salary, um, something which we call a, a more or less a decent salary, uh, they become indebted. Same phenomena, same paradox, but they have yeah more more pressure to spend, and um, um, loans which are available straight away. So uh, that's where financial education can help. And I, I saw also yeah, a similar uh, uh, phenomenon in, in Hong Kong when I worked with migrant workers. The uh, some migrants uh, had um, a poor situation, even though it's not a very poor that migrate to Hong Kong or, or Singapore. It's usually people who have a certain uh, uh, income already in, uh, in their home country. So they migrate. Um, they usually take a 
when they migrate, um, they often take an even bigger debt when they are, uh, are in Hong Kong and they have the pressure to send remittance and so on. So their financial situation is, is getting worse. The other difficulty uh, they face too is that in their home country, um, usually in the Philippines or Indonesia, they they used to have like small shops. So they used to have irregular or um, a daily income from their uh, uh, from their small shops. And all of a sudden they arrive in Hong Kong and they have a monthly income. So they have like this big lump sum and then nothing for 30 days and another big lump sum. So it's, it's more difficult to manage than having uh, small uh, uh, incomes every, every day. So all these difficulties, all these challenges uh, uh, make the situation worse. And it's where financial education can help uh, because um, managing a, a monthly salary, for example, and making sure that at the beginning of the month, you just keep enough for the uh, for the various uh, bills, for example, the rent and so on, is typically what financial education uh, uh, would include. Understanding debts and having this understanding and this confidence to talk to lenders is and to negotiate is uh, is very important. Understanding the different financial products so that uh, they um, you choose the right one and uh, uh, you understand bank uh, bank fees, for example, on account and so on. I think financial education has a big role to play also in terms of um, scam prevention. Because those who have um, more money would be the target of the uh, uh, of the scammers. So uh, especially when they start saving a bit. So that's um, I, I've, uh, uh, when I was running a, a financial education program once in in Hong Kong, uh, it was with um, um, migrant minority uh, uh, migrant minority people who um, mostly come from Pakistan, and one of them told me that the whole his whole home village was uh, completely uh, devastated by by a scam all the village uh, villagers had put their savings in uh, uh, trusted their uh, their saving with uh, with one uh, person who happened to be a crook so uh, they uh, they lost all their savings for years of savings so definitely uh, financial education as um as a role there and also, and it's it's been told to me that um, uh, as one benefit of our of our uh, programs in um uh, in Congo, for example, when um, spouses who uh, would not talk to each other about money management at all, suddenly when they do a, a, um, a financial education program, start uh, working together on a budget working together on uh, spending priorities and, and so on. So that can be a benefit also. Uh, but kind of targeting people a bit above the um, the poverty line and especially making sure that they don't fall back. And obviously youth earning a, a, their first salary. So they are mentally, they don't spend this salary, uh, especially if they, they come from um, uh, um, a, a poor background when, uh, where there's certain numbers of, uh, of things that they could not afford. So mentally, they might spend their first salary three or four times uh, before they even uh, earn it. So it, it's very important to, uh, uh, to give them some kind of uh, uh, education on, on how to manage a first salary, what they can yeah, afford and not, what is a commitment, uh, um, how to set a spending limit, how to how to budget. So uh, uh, these are the things where financial e education can uh, can help. But going further, I, I think that um, the financial education uh, can have a, a broader uh, mind. So I, I put you again on, on this slide the the history of, uh, of financial education. So this is why it's focused on, on debts and, and more banks and, and, and long term savings. The but there are lots of things which are missing, which are about finance, are about money, but which are not included in financial education, and one thing uh, which is um, surprising, or not so surprising when you look at the history of, uh, of financial education, but it is it is still surprising, is the tax. Uh, there's um, 
there's no real tax education in the uh, uh, in financial education, even though everybody uh, pay taxes. And what what you hear in uh, uh, in in many financial educators, um, advisors, not um, uh, like financial counselors, is how to optimize tax and something that I really, it's an expression that I really hate because it means just like uh, trying to find the loophole in, in the law to, to dodge tax payment more or less. There's nothing on public finance um, uh, either, how to understand how a government uh, works in terms of, uh, of finance. And um, I think what's, um, what's really missing is that money management or financial education is seen as something which is completely individual. But and once again, the, the pandemic has been uh, really um, uh, an eye opener on, on that. When we stop spending, actually, it kind of kills all the income for other people because someone's uh, expense is someone else's uh, uh, spending uh, income. Sorry. So the uh, when the uh, the rich stop spending, for example, and it's what happened in, in, in many countries, uh, then all of a sudden, uh, certain numbers of um, uh, of jobs, um, uh, how was that, restaurants, how was that, uh, services and so on, they, they just collapsed because there was no income any, anymore. So I think instead of being very narrow and um, looking at just your individual way of managing money. It's much more important to see how we 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 are kind of in a network of financial transactions and raise awareness on the, on that. And it's um uh, it's what I call like um, empathy or the uh, being more aware of your financial footprint. Because, uh, for example, if um, someone uh, decides, oh, I, I want to really uh, uh, pay as little as possible. I mean, paying as little as possible means that at some point in the network, uh, someone or in the supply chain, someone will have um, a not living wage. So I think all this is very important. And with very, very long uh, supply chains, it's sometimes, well, it's often difficult to see what kind of financial footprint uh, we have but being more aware of that would uh, make us um, uh, think and uh, um, try to correct these systematic issues of uh, or at least um, uh, try to uh, uh, to force the government to um, uh, to address these systematic uh, issues that and uh, causing uh, poverty Another thing which is absolutely not included in financial education and for good reasons because it was mostly uh, banks as, at some point and, and, and microcredits uh, that, um, and that pushed it is the, the notion of, of debt jubilee or, or debt relief yeah, that at some point when you can't pay a debt, when you're completely over-indebted, there's no way you're going to be able to pay a, a debt. Some countries have laws for that, so that um, uh, in certain situations um, enable uh, really heavily indebted families to uh, uh, to stopping their debt and that the debt is erased. Uh, many countries don't have. And at some point when you owe years of income, there's no way you're going to be able to uh, to repay that. So uh, that's something that should be in the financial education uh, programs. And obviously, stronger financial uh, consumer protection uh, is very important too. So the uh, the focus for me on um, um, I'm sorry, apart from the people who start having a, a more decent income, uh, so that they they don't fall back into the the poverty line, is uh, have a more uh, um, global or broader financial education so that it um, uh, raises awareness to the uh, uh, to people who have more money on their, the, their impact and uh, so that they kind of yeah, don't dodge tax or think that dodging tax is a, is a great thing and uh, understanding the, their, their footprint. So if we go back to the 
to the all the, the long list of uh, uh, of poverty uh, causes. We see some of them. The, the green uh, ones are, are more for the uh, uh, those who, who struggle on an everyday basis on uh, with these issues, but like a broader scope, um, financial education. If we look at like uh, tax, um, these um, uh, usually healthcare systems um, have um, uh, funding issues and improving um, tax and, and the, the making the understanding of why tax is so important in a, in a society, uh, in a country, in a nation, uh, could help get funds for these um, uh, healthcare systems as well. And I think there, there are some initiatives in terms of um, uh, having like um, private um, um, healthcare systems, but um, uh, managed by a community and um, things like management of the of the commons uh, could be um, a very interesting topic in terms of financial education uh, to uh, to encourage these uh, these healthcare systems and um, all the issues of slavery and and um, I'm sure you you're well aware of uh, of that uh, it's where the the supply chain making sure that you uh, prices are fair and there's responsible investment there's tracking also along the chain of how things are, are made and uh, or um, uh, mined or, or crops that's um that's very important and um, climate change same thing management of the of the commons would uh, uh, would help tackle part of uh, uh, of it decent jobs i think we've uh, we've talked about it and everything about yeah welfare or infrastructure is where um, uh, encouraging government to to do cash transfers uh, or uh, um, build infrastructure through a better taxation and encourage better uh, uh, tax uh, through the uh, uh, financial uh, can be um, uh, a big help. So to address these systematic uh, causes. So um, when I'm trying to, uh, to, to, to kind of answer the, the question better in, in terms of yeah, how can um, financial education um, tackle poverty, I think for the very poor, uh, there's uh, actually there's probably more lessons to learn from them in terms of their resilience and how they they manage, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, they, they could be in in many cases. I, I feel that they should be the trainers and and, and not me, and the encourage cash transfers. I think that's some. Um, uh, there are some programs. Maybe instead of running this program and programs and, and spending a, a lot on the um, uh, on the trainers' fees, on the uh, on all the logistics and so on, um, I think sometimes just better to just transfer cash to these uh, uh, to these very poor. It won't address all the causes, but I, at least it would address the monetary part of the uh, uh, of their poverty. For people above poverty line, definitely. Budgeting and uh, which is really the core content of financial education uh, should be uh, should be included and, and more widespread, and um, um, encouraging consumer protection and consumer protection laws, especially for um, uh, financial products and, and services. And and it's it's not been the case uh, so far, but financial education should um, target richer people actually, to make them more aware of their financial footprint and, and build this empathy is, um, uh, to kind of uh, address the misconception that poor people are poor because they don't manage their money well. It's not the case. And uh, encourage to, to spend uh, and uh, encourage to, um, uh, to pay a fair amount of, uh, of tax and um, financial institutions. Uh, I ran at some point to, to run uh, financial education programs with uh, uh, with bank employees. Uh, we, we've done that, but uh, uh, I remember once in the Philippines, we, we ran, uh, it was like an awareness um, uh, program. Uh, it was just two, two hours or ha half a day. And we, um, at some point, the um, uh, the participants who, who are more or less um, volunteers from uh, uh, coming from France actually, uh, so Westerners uh, who had just arrived in the in the Philippines, and um, we 
put them in the shoes of um, low-income families in the in the Philippines living in the slum and so on. And at some point, a few of them said, "No, it's impossible." I mean, the the income is just too low. We we cannot because we had given them toy back notes to uh, uh, to simulate the income, and they had various expenses. They had uh, we added cards so that they uh, uh, in terms of yeah health issues and accidents and so on things which are happening or costing money. And they, they, yeah, some of them rebelled and said, no, it's, it's not possible. And um, uh, fortunately, there were a few Filipinos there and said, you know, it's the reality. It's what people live every day. So I think this kind of awareness is very important because certain numbers of people don't realize what, what poverty uh, uh, really, really means. And, and they would also um, see the, the different uh, uh, dimensions of poverty it's not just the money lacking it's the uh the kind of consideration from other people the uh i remember um uh, being in a workshop which simulated also the the lack of uh, uh the, the poor people situation and that was in the in the u.s and uh, i was really struck by not just the all the hardships that um and, and all the the things that you could not pay but there was also um, a, a lack of time. I mean, everything you had to queue um, because you you had not a, a proper mobile phone, for example, and you can do uh, you can do things online. So uh, everything took much more time than uh, if you had more money. So uh, not only they, they they had not enough as family we we didn't have enough money but we are losing a lot of time for everything so uh, uh, so I think this this is very uh, important to uh, uh, the, the more people are aware the the I think it would address some of the inequalities because people would be um, more tempted to. Um, my courage to uh, to say no. We we cannot go on with so many inequalities. Uh, same thing for the the financial institutions, uh, so that they understand that some of the the financial uh, products that they design. When you have a very low income, uh, it's it's going to be very difficult. It's not the appropriate thing. It's going to yeah push you into debt very easily. So uh, and that's some um, uh, and push for debt relief and uh, and laws on uh, over indebtedness so that at some point uh, one um, people cannot borrow more uh, and the there is um, a debt relief. Uh, government. Um, one of the the things too is also um, uh, corruption, and I think corruption is about money. So why it's not included in financial education? It's uh, ethics is very very important in terms of uh, of money, and businesses, companies, they have a, a big role to pay in terms of providing living uh, wages. Something building some awareness uh, through financial education workshops so that they understand the situation of the of people who have um, a, a not a distant salary, for example. So these are kind of ideas of uh, how financial education could um, address uh, uh, poverty. So I, um, I'm, I hope that that can yeah, make you make you think. I, uh, uh, I'd like to open the floor to uh, to questions now. Yes. Yes, Clément. Hello. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, thank you. Thanks so much. That was very interesting. Um, maybe just a quick question about the preferred way of implementing uh, financial education. I, I guess it's going to depend on, as uh, we can see in this slide, on the different type of uh, individual you're going to speak to. Mm -hmm. but like according to you, what's the what could be the best way of doing financial education? Is it I don't know workshops, discussions building tools mm -hmm. i don't know mm -hmm. um the what i found very efficient is like simulation <clears throat> you um you you kind of recreate the real life in your uh, uh in your workshop uh so that um uh, so for example you um I, I do one for small uh, businesses for example the there's numerous programs on uh, numerous ngos who, who, who do programs on um, income generation 
And I realized that many of the uh, of the staff, of the NGO staffs, uh, don't necessarily have experience themselves of running a business. So each time uh, when I, I run a, um, a, a workshop, training the training of trainers on uh, income generation, for example, and how to run a business, and it's part of financial education, uh, I I start with um, half a day uh, simulation where. NGOs, uh, NGO staff, so the, the trainers uh, have money, they have capital, and they have uh, uh, they have to start um, a little business themselves, and they they buy and and sell things, and uh, they have to uh, do the bookkeeping, and by doing so they kind of realize all the hardships by themselves of having your own uh, business, and and usually um, poor income uh, people have their own business there yeah they um, some are employed but yeah uh, very often they 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 have their uh, uh, their small business so uh, these this kind of empathy uh, the, 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 these kind of workshops can really uh, encourage NGO staff to to think more more thoroughly the other thing too um, uh, is to include um, uh, financial education in in kind of real life, especially when uh, I was talking for the uh, for the very poor. If you include things for the for the very poor, like food budgeting, don't talk about kind of budgeting in, in general, but um, having something very very targeting, uh, uh, or if you realize that your community has uh, um, trouble with health issues. So just look at their, uh, uh, do the needs assessment. You, you learn a lot through needs assessment and then you you run a, a workshop. So something with simulation, very hands-on, but on uh, how to save for health, for example. So, uh, and then, um, it won't solve the systematic uh, issues, but I think the systematic issues uh, they, they can be solved if we if we do financial empathy workshops for people who are who have uh, higher income and people who take decisions. I hope that uh, answers your question. That does, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I I, I think it's very interesting because we're yeah. Most of the time, we are uh, focusing on the on our target beneficiaries, which are the very poor and just above poverty line. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I think like it's more difficult because it's 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 a whole system. And I find like it's very interesting because I really agree that the very very poor. Um, they know how to manage a budget because they have nothing. So a cent is a cent. So and it's when survival. they have yeah. a cent, yeah, exactly. They, they, yeah, it's it's uh, the the instinct of uh, of uh, to to survive. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're gonna have like this fine line when the uh, this very poor, if it happens, uh, go um, buy through the line like they are just above poverty and because the lack of education they will not know how to manage the extra income they receive suddenly mm -hmm. and it's where i totally agree they are the first target of all these shark loans yeah because and I think it's where financial education should really help yeah in prevention yeah. also before they get this um kind of extra income yeah, and so that that was when you did your 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 votes. Um, so when do we start? Uh, at which age can we start? You know, financial education for me, it's also connected with that because mm -hmm. I, I think, think we, it's really yeah. We, the we younger end up you doing learn, that. and yeah, the better it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, we we end up doing this. Uh, I think it's the second time I asked the question. Uh, yeah. um, did you want <laughs> I to? Uh, and I, each time I've been this time with like eighty percent wanted to uh, the workshop yeah. poverty. The other times I think seventy five percent. So, but I think yeah, the, the next time I just yeah, yeah, do point. it. Cause... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. But uh, yes, but after I mean, like for the the richer people, uh, the financial institution, and for the governments and the companies, I think it's more difficult. I think for um, I mean uh, NGOs. Yeah, uh, and that's something. You I... don't, yeah. 
it's something I'm I'm trying to to think because uh, it's um I, I can see I mean it's it's built on the like 18 years now of of experience and I can see that yeah very poor people I mean it's limited what we can do for good reasons mm -hmm. while I explain yeah. so but at some point uh, uh, I'm trying to think of how we can uh, have more of this awareness workshop having this notion of financial footprint. It's. Uh, yeah. uh, I remember once in, in Phnom Penh actually, and there was um, uh, we had a discussion with uh, with some foreigners saying how they they can yeah, were very happy to bargain with the uh, um, mm. uh, the tuk tuk drivers and the kind of lower price yeah. they they could get. So, why? I mean. Mm. I'm happy to give them more than they ask, actually, because it's, uh, yeah. I, I mean, if us who have enough money, we don't give them money, how can they get their income from? So, yeah, but especially that, in countries where there's no, uh, yeah. uh, there's no government support and so on. Yeah, but that's the very fine line because it's like, um, like everybody likes to the idea of saving money or do some good deal. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's like, uh, yeah, how you you behave as a, um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's 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 difficult. Yeah, it's, it's um uh, there's there's a game we do in the uh, uh usually at the conclusion of our workshops, and um you you may uh, you may know it. It's uh, we have um um a thread a ball of a wood ball or a, a, a thread ball and and we throw it to uh, we stand in a circle and we throw it to uh, uh to all the participants one in one and and we do like um a, a web a spider web mm. and uh the uh i can kind of pull on the thread and the like the three or four uh, people just uh, who, who who holds the uh, um the thread can feel the the tension i say it's the same thing i mean finance is a system so it's um uh, you can just uh, be in your own isolated decision making process and and just see oh by bargaining and i will yeah save i will yeah uh, um spend less but it has impacts and it's mm -hmm. something that i think financial education should uh, uh should teach to to everyone actually is whatever your decision it has an impact to others because it's so um finance is not um uh, it's not your money it's how you uh, you manage what is in the end a, a commons it's it's this it's this money this financial system a role in this financial mm -hmm. system and uh, yeah. at least to raise that awareness would be very mm. important. Yeah, but what what is difficult is if I, you have like the poor game of the industries, and you have after like the responsibility of the consumer themselves. So yeah, so it's really like uh, I I I totally agree. It's a, it's a whole system. Yeah. And it's always yeah change and very challenging, very hard to uh, uh to change a whole system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's very interesting. We are currently working on um, a a one campaign about uh, debt and other debt issues in mm -hmm. Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and we're talking about uh, all all these things, of course. But uh, our main target audience here is the very poor and the just above poverty line, which mm -hmm. is our target uh, beneficiaries mm -hmm. um but uh yeah yeah I, I i can yeah really understand what what you everything you 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 explain and uh... mm -hmm. yeah and at some point uh the the issue of um of debt is the uh the very poor uh and you can yeah you you, you can understand they they're in a situation where they they have no money at all and mm -hmm. so it's um, their kind of yeah only choice. And I, t I told you, I've been numbers of time. I've, I've heard people um, say, "Well, we had no choice. Uh, it's to borrow money. It's uh, because there's no other income." Mm. So yeah. um, and they 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 kind of short term, and especially when you're hungry, especially when you're so stressed yeah, yeah. by many things. I mean, they're short term. Mm -hmm. They kind of need to find a solution today literally yeah. and i say what well, tomorrow the week after is just yeah they, it's out of their scope so mm. but so yes you can uh, 
raise awareness, but at some point when they have absolutely no income, no food and so on, mm-hmm. how, how else can we help them? Yeah, so that's that's the two things that are different. But uh, actually, it's it's really that it's more here. Like the 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 awareness campaigns would be more. Um, yeah, I think like the target audience will be more the 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 people really at the limit of poverty and reaching yeah. like the line above poverty. Mm-hmm. Because it's where it's 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 where the 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 problem is if I, is in in Southeast Asia is yeah, the the, the shark loans gonna really target these yes. these uh, people mm-hmm. uh, because like the very very poor they don't have any money no. anyway so no. this is this is okay it's it's quite a straightforward like to to what service to 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 provide them. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, the one who gets, you know, like in, in this fine line is more difficult because you have, like you were explaining, there are a lot of temptation. Yeah. Uh, temptation is like, oh, suddenly I have, I make some, some more money. So yeah. how do I spend it? And if you don't have, you know, like the, the, the financial education on, uh, and, and the boring and, and all the shark loans, they are, very aggressive yeah. uh, on marketing and attracting people and say oh i can lend, lend you this but they don't so it's really like to understand the system of loan also is that a loan has a cost you don't borrow money just for the same amount that you borrow they're going to yeah. be a cost they're going to be you know uh, interest rates uh, they're going to be like uh, some repayments uh, scheme and plan and schedule and if you don't follow them they're going to they're going to be some consequences and sometimes you have additional fees so it's all these things that uh, yeah major- majority of the people don't understand because the offer of the shark loans are so attractive it's also. um this there's one thing we um we i think we use them in in cambodia also for some uh, some products cambodia has a, a huge um uh, debt problem and nepal also mm-hmm. yeah. uh, the yeah. um what we did um was to um uh, use pictures uh, mm-hmm. so that they uh, they understood so use kind of awareness instead of using numbers because it's too difficult and in the end it's not the maths if they can't calculate yeah. an interest it doesn't matter but in, they mm-hmm. need to kind of understand somewhere in their mind that uh, they would pay more and that yeah. if the yeah. if they have and I think we, we take a very simple example in the, in the workshops or even as pictures um, on a poster if they had, an, I, I don't know, they have, yeah, they earn 10,000 uh, uh, riel a day with the, the payment of the debt, they're not going to earn 10,000 riel tomorrow. They mm-hmm. would earn maybe 6,000 riel only yeah. because from tomorrow on, they have to pay back the debt. So just uh, they kind of, yeah, uh, very simple uh, yeah. Uh, pictures uh, yeah. to raise awareness. I yeah. I think we um, we use also the um, a picture of... Um, banknotes with uh, a fire above so you can be mm-hmm. careful because uh, so that people kind of yeah you know advertising uses these pictures that we remember and mm-hmm. yeah. uh, I mean we try to do the same thing with uh, uh, with some key messages in uh, 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 with financial education especially around debts and what we did in Hong Kong too and that could be a, a good thing we kind of collected a few ads from uh, shark lenders and during the the workshop, we kind of deconstructed them with the mm. um, uh, the participants to to make them understand behind the lines what what this really meant. Yeah. And say, okay, look at how they attract you. And uh, uh, typically, there would be a picture uh, in Hong Kong. It's mostly the Filipinos who are targeted by the shark lenders. A, a woman typically smiling, so she's happy. So. Bingo, mm-hmm. you go for it. And then uh, there, there were pictures of, of things that she could buy and, and there was something alluding to her family being better. I mean, all the, we kind of really had a critical uh, reading of the mm-hmm. ads and that's something mm-hmm. that you, you could also yeah. Uh, uh, do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, at the moment we're working more on the, the awareness campaign uh, raising and uh, the second step after would be to build um, a, a, a financial literacy training mm-hmm. um, 
uh, align with the, the awareness campaign with okay. all but the, the things. Yeah, you've don't hesitate to uh, to keep in touch because I've got yeah oh, yeah, I, yeah uh, many training mm -hmm. examples already uh, uh, done. So uh, if you are if you're interested, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will definitely. Yeah. Melody, okay. yes, you wanted to say something. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, actually, even before pandemic, and then during the pandemic uh, years, the digital financial literacy has come to fore. Quite a lot of them are already online on the social media. And so we're focusing the, I don't know if it's changing the arena, but the focusing on the digital arena as far as financial literacy now. Uh, so we're uh, looking at the possibility of really making it good on financial literacy using the digital um, platforms. So I'm, I'm sure it's going to be just another um, round of challenge as well. I would love the methodology on the simulation component because it's more on a face-to-face. -face, uh, face-to-face, yeah. <laughs> So, but the digital would be entirely a different world. So, yeah. Um, I've got mixed feelings on digital. Uh, first thing is I've, I've uh, tried, so you're talking about digital uh, training, training on, on digital platforms, not digital money. No, no. Okay. Digital financial literacy. Okay. Yeah. So um, first thing is um, uh, I've tried well before the pandemic, I think since 2018, uh, uh, I've developed, um, um, so NB Macfield has developed a platform uh, for trainers on financial education offering uh, online courses. And um, the the uptake has been very, very low. So I thought if um, trainers in NGOs who are yeah, motivated to learn all these kind of things, they, they're not uh, really in the habit of, uh, um, of taking uh, uh, digital training. So that's going to be even harder for uh, 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 their uh, target groups. That's one thing. Say, uh, that said, uh, the uh, certain numbers of people, uh, so I don't know if it's the very poor, I, I, I doubt it, but certain numbers of people um, take advice on money management from uh, social media. So it can be TikTok, can be yeah, Facebook a bit less, but yeah, uh, things like a yeah, platform like TikTok and so on, they, they see um, uh, videos and, and so on. So. I think that would be more the um, the avenue. It's to um, uh, to uh, look at the uh, uh, um, the um, yeah, training through um, very short videos on on financial education, and probably also to uh, kind of fight some misconceptions. Yeah. So I'm always saying about uh, debts. One uh, one way would be to uh, say, okay, wait a minute. A debt is not an additional income. Because I've heard that from uh, uh, from people saying, oh, but uh, taking a debt. What's the difference? I, I've been told. I've been asked once. What's the difference between a salary and um, a debt? So a uh, very short video, like yeah, uh, 30 seconds on on TikTok, for example, could, could help. But proper financial um, uh, education uh, courses, I think that's that's going to be difficult. People are not patient enough. It's going to be a very, very, very low percentage of people who, who follow proper uh, online courses. Yeah, that's true. But it's something okay. I like to um, uh, to work on actually. So very short videos, and uh, you can you can look. I'm, I'm sure on, um, uh, on TikTok and so on, uh, on uh, Instagram, uh, maybe also there. There are some yeah, uh, influencers who, who do um, kind of financial education. Right? It's, there's a lot about yeah, investment. There's a lot about um, and that's the, the whole other thing about yeah investment. People think yeah investment is a uh, 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 this big thing they 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 want to have some advice on 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 where to invest and so on and uh, and in a way probably financial education like mainstream financial education has lost a bit of momentum because they they're not in these um, social medias. Yeah, so we can just rely on short uh, burst of uh, key messages on financial yes. yeah. education. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And, and same thing. Don't hesitate, Melody, if you are, if you want some uh, uh, some help on that. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Good. So, um, I think it's more than time. I'm happy to stay if you uh, if you want, uh, but I don't want you to uh, 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 to get late to whatever you had uh, scheduled after our uh, our webinar. So um, if you have your other questions, I'm ready to take them. But if you uh, uh, if you want to um, uh, stop here now, uh, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah I'm I, uh, discussion. Yeah. Sorry, uh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Just saying that uh, I'm looking at the financial education with a different lens. And so thank you that, for that, Sophie. Okay, good. Thanks. Yeah, that was my, one of my objectives. So I'm happy there. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, Clément. Yeah, thank you very much, Sophie. And uh, yeah, if you can share again your, your presentation and definitely like when we will be, you know, at a stage of uh, reviewing like the, the, the training and everything, I, I, I get in touch with you. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, with pleasure. Mm -hmm. and, thank you. Uh, yes, and happy also to um, join the webinar about uh, at uh, which age we should start. To... Yeah, I think I, I, I won't give you the choice <laughs> next time. I, I put that on because the... Because it's uh, something that I, yeah, I really would be keen to, to develop also. Okay, good, good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank, thank you, you Sophia. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.